What's up, Still Mace with Warriors? Here I am again with another podcast episode. And uh, like always, I'm super excited. Today I have Lori, Lori Berta. Did <laughs> yeah. I say Berta right? Berta you or did. Berta? You did. Okay. Yep. Okay, so Lori Berta, and uh, you know, I found her through Instagram like everyone else. Um, I'm super excited <laughs> to have you on here, by the way. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So like, like everyone else, you know, I start off with just asking about your story. I mean, I've been on your Instagram. I know a bit. Your videos are badass. Your, your tips on Still Mace are phenomenal. Um, that's one of the reasons I started following you. And uh, uh, to me, you're an inspiration. I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to put it on the table right now. That's why every lady that I have on here is super inspired by them. Um, but yeah, tell me about your story because I know there has to be more to you. Right. Well, um, so I've been in strength and conditioning, personal training, whatever term you want to use now, nowadays, um, for about 20 years. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really, I can't actually, it's really hard for me to believe it's been that long because it doesn't feel that long. Wow. And when I first got out of school, I was an athlete in my youth. I was a equestrian and I had a really hard time. So I was a single sport person and I had a really hard time transitioning. Like when I was finishing high school and, and we were deciding, I was trying to figure out what, what I wanted to do. In my mind, I was like, I'm going to start to prepare for the Olympics. And wow. my family was like, no, you're not. And that no. was, the right. I know Why? That, that way. Cause you know, they, they had, they had that, that forward sight that I didn't at 17 or 18. Yeah. And the short story is I did, and I ended up going to college, and it was great. But those few years after high school and college were really, really rough for me. Um, at that time, I completely stopped working out. I gave up everything. I gained a bunch of weight. I was very depressed. I was just, like, completely disoriented because all the routine and everything I had built and I had practiced, literally, I started writing at six for, for, for those formative years. That's all I knew. So I went to college and, you know, I kind of got myself together at some point and in my early 20s, um, very early 20s, started working in physical therapy and I got my first certifications and um, one of the therapists at the place that I was working was like, you know what, there's this facility that just opened up called Equinox. This was back in Chicago. And wow. I, I went to work for them and that's where I kind of got my start in the training you know, and I'd realized at that point, especially having those hiccups of those, those years that were really rough, how important keeping the routine and figuring out how to help people get through things like depression or life changes or how you deal with things. Like for me, I mean, I was really, you're just a kid still at 17 or 18, you know, and I, I didn't, I wasn't able to, to wrap my head around the fact that the decision that my family had encouraged me to take was the best one, you know? Okay. And so for me, it was just a big unexpected event. And, you know, I completely collapsed from yeah. that. And so I think then in my early 20s, I mean, 21, 22, that was around the time that I really started to figure out, you know what, there's a way to take athleticism training. There's so much more about it, like the mental piece of it, you know? Right. And I was with them for a long time. I was with them a little over a decade. I had a lot of roles. I was a PT manager. I was um, in charge of the their education in um, the region in Chicago for a period of time. I was a coach, tier four coach. I'd done like all the things I could do. And right before when I was pregnant with my son was when I thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rip that bandaid off and I'm going to go off on my own. And, yes. and I did. So, and in those years, in terms of the sport, um, I never went back and competed in riding. It's just, just ride for fun when I can, but I ended up doing marathons. I did bodybuilding, um, you know, learned, got the maze, learned the May. I mean, there's just been, and I sort of learned to take on things that make me really scared and really uncomfortable because you really do grow from those in my opinion. That explains why you look like such a fucking badass on every Instagram. I mean, first of all, I didn't know you had like 20 years of strength and conditioning. And then now I'm yeah. hearing you bodybuilding. Yeah. Days. Wow, that's intense. Now, yeah. do you feel like you still like, I mean, obviously, if you come from, you know, the athletic side, do you feel like you're competitive and you still like? I'm very competitive. But here's what's funny. The reason I got into riding 
was literally, I sucked at everything single sport my, my mom put me in. And it was mm -hmm. awful because I knew as a kid, the teacher or a coach or instructor was like, you know, this was like the eighties, the early eighties, mid eighties, where it was still okay to be like, yeah, you know what? She's not, this isn't her thing. Like yeah. <laughs> we need to take this kid out of it. I mean, they threw me out of gymnastics, jazz dance, ballet, judo. I don't know. Like everything we tried, it was like, mm. and then I don't know. I got on the back of a horse in a barn and I loved like the work in the barn. Cause where I was, you know, you were expect, it wasn't, you were working hard. We were mucking stalls and you, I just love being around the animals, everything. I was like, this is my jam a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, so, yeah. at, least, at least you got to like experience all of that because growing up, the only thing I ever tried was maybe basketball too short for that soccer. Yeah. So scared of the fucking ball to hit me in yeah. the face. So, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, it was, I was, I'm in hindsight, I'm like, oh my God, I am so blessed. It was, it was such an amazing experience, you know? And um, it did really, what I, what I now understand in my 40s is really how much though the routine that I built up at, in those formative years, how that's really what I do with all my clients. And it's really how I live my life. I mean, I trained six, seven days a week, right? We'd be hours out in the barns working. Um, I had my school schedule in high school actually allowed me, I went to school early and ended early. I'd drive two hours to go train. I'd get home late at night. Like I just knew that that pattern got ingrained early. Right. And, and I mean, you had to do something with it too, right? You can't just let yeah. it sit there. Yeah. 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 And so you realize now I'm not saying you have to go that extreme now, but there are little parts, micro parts of those kind of routines that when people implement, in my opinion, in their life, they can really get, they can just feel more put together. They can feel like things are more manageable, a little bit more in control. And I feel like for most of us, really, it's, it's stress management, it's life management, it's feeling good about yourself, but balancing it with all the parts of your life. And it's not easy. And it changes. It changes every few years, right? As life right. keeps going and you're going to have more unexpected things than you are planned things. And you know, it's all about, are those things going to take you down or are you going to, you know, meet them and overcome them and get through them and probably come out stronger on the other side? Yeah. Just listening to you. I'm like, you do, you do online and, and live and virtual coaching. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. hmm, coaches and coaches. <laughs> <laughs> <Just Hi. listening. laughs> Hello. Yeah. yeah, no. Well, tell me more about that. Tell me more about like what you do with your clients in, in regards to what you're talking about right now. Yeah. So, um, well, in terms of, are you asking about the virtual training or just training in general? Just the, you know, the whole mindset stuff, like yeah. doing things. Yes. I, so, you know, I found, I think starting out in a point in my life where I, at a young age knew that Somebody had said it to me at some point, she's not really that good at this. You know, that really sank in pretty deeply. So learning, all right, you know what? I'm going to work really, really hard. And I'm probably always going to have to be one of those people that works hard at something. Like I'm not naturally gifted at most things. I mean, and the truth is most people aren't. Right. And for a lot of my clients, I try and tell them immediately, wrap your mind around the fact to get comfortable with working hard. Because especially on Instagram, you know, we see even, even me, like you put together a video, you put a little fun music to it. It's a snippet. It's a moment in time. It's meant to be put together very seamlessly and very pretty, but it doesn't show the blood, sweat and tears, the grit, the mistakes, you know? And I think that we live in a society where people see that final package and they really think that's just how it is. Right. And it's, and it's so much more. So that's one of the first things I'm like, get comfortable with work. Um, I also call all my clients and I mean, whether they're 80 or they're 20 and mine run that bandit, um, my athletes, I think people have a separation. They don't realize that you're an athlete of life. You're an athlete yeah. of your life. You know, I'm glad you brought that up too. I think it was, um, I don't know if you ever heard of them. Strength mat matters or strength. Something like that. I think yeah. they start off as kettlebells, but they kind of came up with this term everyday athlete. Yes. And I think they trademarked it. And I thought yes. that was like the, the best. It like blew my mind away. And it, it's, yes. just, it's a simple like concept, but it's true. Oh, it's so true. And you don't understand. It's I love saying to somebody, 
you're my athlete and they will look at you because you know they never they never took on that identity and that they've categorized athletes like way up here and them down here and i'm like hell no you're <laughs> juggling jobs and kids and spouses and chaos like and you and you came out the other end the next day like you survived <laughs> you're totally an athlete and Absolutely. that does that does change people's mindset you know um so be willing to work being you know understanding right away that we're that most of us really there's the, uh, the percentage of people that are naturally gifted at any given thing is relatively small. So you have to be willing to work and you have to really have that mindset of, of believing that you're more capable of what you think you are. And I think with any part of training in the first few steps, and for some people it could be a few weeks and for some a few months, it's, it's a very deliberate narrative that you start with yourself and you mm. don't believe it in the beginning. And that's fine. I'm like, it's like taking steps. It's going to be uncomfortable one foot in front of the other. And then through the training and success, little successes in their actual workouts, all of a sudden they're like, oh shit. I'm like, I love my clients are like, I'm kind of a badass. I was like, <laughs> yeah, you're a total badass. I knew that. <laughs> you know? Isn't that I'm beautiful? So I need to join the party. <laughs> I think that's a beautiful moment, right? When they're like kind it's of making their, their own realization happen, yeah. and their own awareness of like, damn, I should have done this a long time ago. Yes. Fuck, I feel great. Yes, yes. And it does, it bleeds into the rest of their life. You know, it bleeds into their, um, their confidence, their role as a spouse, as a parent, as an employee or an employer. I mean, you just, they feed each other. And so at the end of the day, there's been moments in my life when I reflect and I thought, should I have done something different professionally? And I'm like, no way. I mean, I've had the opportunity to work with people of all backgrounds, all ages, all experiences. I've gotten a free education on, you know, more areas of the world than I ever would have gotten out of any, you know, formal, you know, facility. And it's just, it's like, and then I've gotten, they've paid me to make them stronger. And I get to see that success, you know, through their eyes and through their experience. And it's just, I say it often on Instagram, it's, you can't bottle that feeling, but it's addictive. It's just like, yeah. yeah. So you found, you found a good addiction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a really yeah. good one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I've had my share of, you know, moments. <laughs> so that's good. That's actually going to lead me. I'm, I'm looking at your shirt and obviously yeah. if, if someone's watching on YouTube, they'll be able to see it. If not go on YouTube, it says yeah. Row house, right? Tell yeah. me about that. Because again, I go on your Instagram and I see all this cool stuff. So what is row yeah. house? And, and do you work there or how, what's going on? I do. I okay. do. So it's really interesting. So I moved from Chicago to Texas in the fall and um, didn't know anybody like it was crazy. There was um, uh, my client, Holly. I love Holly. You'll see me post <laughs> about her often on my story and stuff. So she was a new client here. We actually um, were, she was following on Instagram. So she, she became a live client. It was really cool after like a year. And one day she says to me, hey, I go to this indoor rowing group fitness class. And I'll be honest, anybody who knows me knows I've always hesitated with group fitness only because I'm such a detailed person. And back in Chicago with a lot of my clients, I you know, you love it because it would give them other work to do outside of you. But a lot of times they would come back and there'd be things that can't be addressed in a large mm -hmm. group, right? Mm -hmm. And so I always felt a little conflicted. Plus, I like to be by myself when I work out. But she asked me to go and I was like, okay, I'll go. And, and we go. And I, I mean, I've done rowing like probably like a lot of people, like a lot of CrossFit typically or strength and conditioning where you get on and do like a 250, 500 meter sprints. Never really gave thought to form or anything. So we go into this class and I was so blown away how it was taught. It was very skills driven. It was very technique driven because they, the row house is a national chain. They're, they're franchised indoor rowing classes and we wow. have all different we have a hit style we have more technique style but the biggest thing is that it's um it stays true to the sport of rowing so you break down the stroke and you learn you know how to get into swing what i what i was blown away with in that first class was how much of it was congruent to swinging a mace oh. the face 
the phases of swinging it. There's a pull, there's a push, there's a moment of a lot of power and then kind of a recovery phase. And you learn to regulate your power through building your skill and your technique first. Just like with the mace, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see how quickly I was like, okay. I know, right? <laughs> my face just like, woo, my eyeballs uh, went all out. <laughs> oh, no. So it was so cool. So, so I was there for, you know, a few months. And then some of the, the coaches there and the owner were like, hey, would you be interested in being a coach for us? And I was like, what? I don't do group fitness. Like, I don't. I'm so scared. That's the scariest thing anybody's asked me to do. And then I was like, <laughs> sign me up. I'm on. Let's do this. <laughs> and I went through the training and, and it's, it was, it's been pretty grueling training. Like they're very, um, you know, you've got a, you've got different aspects to it that are different than one-on-one -on -one or even small group training, right? You've got a right. whole room of people. We've had moments where we have literally former rowers, collegiate professional rowers next to like, stay-at-home mom next to like somebody who's dealing with morbid obese i mean you can have like it runs the bannon in terms of who you can have in a given class wow. and in that class everybody pulls together there's this really we call it getting into swing and it'd be like a flow state right yeah and when you get that going it's like everybody feels successful and because it's so technique driven and because I believe teaching the mace can be so technique driven, you know, to do the cool things. I know what it looks mm -hmm. like to most people, but they don't always recognize how difficult a lot of the movements are, whether you're in the strength realm or you're in like the more flow, like they are hard things to do. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, so yeah, so it was just, it just been one more unexpected event. Um, but really cool. And a lot of the people now, the community that I, they've been so welcoming to me. And, um, a lot of the people in the community are like, what's that thing you swing on Instagram? I'm like, yeah. they're starting to follow you. Right. And now they're like, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah. 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 So, so that's row house. So they're all over the country. They're popping up. It's, um, it's indoor rowing. It's, okay. you know, but they're 45 minute okay. classes. So it's not like getting on and doing, um, you know, doing just a sprint. It's from a, from a conditioning perspective because it's no impact and it's 85% of your muscles. It's quite a workout. I mean, I got yeah, smoked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, well I, I mean, if you got smoked, I might try that later. <laughs> I was just asking because I went on, on their Instagram and I was like, dang, there's like, there's no pictures of people actually rowing. They just have like the little paddle. And I'm like, okay, I have to ask about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Now, tell, so tell us about your, your experience with Still Mace. Because, uh, I mean, obviously, you're on a Still Mace podcast. Everyone's yeah. going to wonder, yeah. like, how did you get as good as you were? And how did it impact you? Yeah, well, the backstory, the really short version is um, I ordered a Mace by accident from Onnit. And that was, I was trying to figure out today. I think it was three years ago. It may have been two and a half years ago, somewhere around there. And I will never forget, I meant to order a club and then the box came and I put it in the kitchen and I sat on the floor with my son and I was like, I don't, I don't even actually know what that is. Like I <laughs> legit don't know what that is. And I'm like picking it oh up gosh. and I was like, oh, there's no way. I start Googling. I see like Leo Savage. I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be my jam or not. This is kind of cool, kind of scary. And then I started researching like, you know, many people like well, what, how, where am I going to learn about this? And so I went down to on it and I did the steel mace certification. And then, um, I had met, um, Isak and Aaron at that point and studied Viking Ninja for at least a year, almost a couple years. And kind of, that was how I got my feet wet with the mace through a lot of their style and stuff. But, the, but yeah. really day to day, cause you know, they're in Texas and I'm in Chicago. Um, I would go out, coach TJ Lawson's out at MSP in Chicago and, mm -hmm. or in the suburbs, I should say. And I'd go out on Mondays and we just trained together and I'd be like, I was doing this. And I, what do you think about that? And, and I, he's really just an incredible mace practitioner in my opinion, yeah, yeah. strength coach and all around just awesome guy. So that helped. But a lot of it really was taking then, you know, after about five, six months of it, it was taking 
then I started to feel comfortable taking what I do and what I know as a trainer of those years and how do I put this together and how do I teach it and how do I, because if I tell, if I work for myself, if I figure out how to teach something, then I can figure out how to do it. I know it's kind of reversed from right. how a lot of people do it, but it's almost like I'm teaching myself and then I figure out how to do it. And I, you know, just played with it. And that was sort of how, how it evolved. And then I got in the point where, you know, I'd only really work with steel mace and the quad mace. And, um, I mean, I immediately was so deeply affected by it. Like I, the power generated from it and how you feel that bug that some people get, I got it immediately. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to get this 360. And for some reason, the heavier I went, just the deeper that went for me. And it's yeah. not for everybody, but I love heavy, meal, heavy steel mace swinging. Yeah, I let just, me just say that you're a beast because I have been <laughs> like, I keep telling everyone on this podcast, like, I have not purchased the quad maze. I have to earn that shit. I mean, and I see you and it looks like, you know, like so effortless. And I know that it did, you know, I know you've been training hard for that though, yeah, right? Yeah, like you didn't yeah, just yeah. start there. No, no, really hard. And also I'm very conservative because training regular people for the most part for this many years you learn that your number one priority, and for me as well, is not getting injured. Mm -hmm. So I rather dial it down and do it in really small little chunks a little at a time. So working like my grip strength and all the supplement stuff that I did for that, you know, really helped over time getting there. And I love to lift kettlebells for my legs. And so, because I'm short and kind of light. So for me, when I started getting me the heavier mace, the first few times I got pulled around kind of off my feet, I was like, yeah, so I got to figure out how to anchor down, you know? I'm so happy that you mentioned that because I'm hella short. And yeah. some people are like, wait, you're short? I'm like, yeah, I'm 5'2". And I get that same feeling. So I'll thank you for mentioning yeah. that. There's yeah. short people problems out there. No, it's true because a lot of people have uh, Instagram been like, I thought you were like 5'7 or 5'8. I'm like, I'm 5'3 on a good day. <laughs> Like a good day. And the older I get, I'm shorter and shorter. And so you do. So sometimes even some of the moves where you do like reverse lunges and swings, there's some I can't do because I literally will smash my leg. I'm like, well, unfortunately, God decided that wasn't supposed to be in my <laughs> routine. So that's fine. Whatever. It's just, it's just yeah. us being short. But at least if someone's short's listening, you're not yes. alone. You are you're not alone. <laughs> So you mentioned some supplemental stuff, like you, you do some stuff on the side. Lost you there for a second. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Sorry. you mentioned some stuff that you like you do on the side for grip strength. And I've seen some, like, I yeah. remember I fell in love with that. You grab the band, you set it like towards the corner and then you kind of get yeah. the whole 360 movement and then you press. Yes. I loved that. I don't know where you learned that. I don't know if you came up with it, but that was like, yeah. Like that blew me away. So I know you do all kinds of stuff like that. Let's talk yeah. a little bit about like some stuff that people can do to like improve their 360s or even get better at. Them. Well, yeah. So all of that stuff, yes, that was all like my playtime. You know, like I said, once I did um, on it, once I got, once I was going through the the Viking Ninja white belt, like I you take that and then you're like, okay, what else can I? Where, how can I grow from this? And that's where I started to take things as a trainer of people, you know, regular people, what are the things they need to do? And I do find that while the mace strengthens the grip, you still have to learn grip regulation, you know, and a lot of people don't know what that is. So using bands, using towels, um, using a dowel rod, things that are a little less load, but, but you can learn isometric tension on, I like to use. With the, I know which exercise you're talking about too. Where you uh, yeah, I that. totally yeah. fell in love with it. I'm like, I gotta try that, and I swear I do that like constantly just to get that skill set down. Like, yeah. yes, thank you yes. for sharing that. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Well, no, and a lot of that comes from my background as a trainer and the certifications. You know, I did FMS years ago, mm. so corrective stuff, things where you talk about patterns. And I'm always working a pattern or a movement versus an exercise, right? right. So I knew for me, um, especially when I was getting heavier, that the important, most important phase of that swing was that pulling downward. So anything that I could do to use resistance um, to encourage that and to pattern that would help. 
And I always add a towel because that's just, anytime you use the towel as your form of your grip, it increases the work on your grip, you know? Right. And I just pattern that push. It's almost like for me, when I come around in the 360, I push downward pretty low. I mean, some people yeah. end higher. I like to go pretty low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, and I, I love the, that. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely so, love that. So, and then I use a lot, like I'll have it on Instagram. We use the towel, like even for squats, even for anything where people start to learn. Because creating that tension, whether it's pulling or pushing, is not, in my opinion, it's not intuitive. And when you put a mace in someone's hand and you haven't given them any kind of cue, a lot of people you'll see their wrists kind of start to hang. Right. I call it hanging it on your tendons. And I don't think that's a good thing, right? Like that ain't going to play out well long term. Mm -hmm. Right? No, hell no. No, you got to learn like regulate, pull apart, push together, create that isometric tension. So any, and that starts with your grip. It starts with your grip, you know, yeah. and that mind connection. That's the other thing. Right. Now I didn't know, I had no idea you moved from Chicago over to Texas. So that makes yeah. sense now. Cause I saw you in some videos with, uh, TJ, right. That's his name. TJ. Yeah. I yeah, saw you yeah. On, and now uh, you guys look phenomenal. You guys, I think you guys were doing some mindful mechanics. That's what I guess that's yeah. what I call it. And that yeah. was just like, wow, they look so great together. Um, tell me about that. Tell me about that gym a little bit because I'm always so interested. Well, they're great. So, um, MSP gym, you have Zane and TJ and Coach Jimmy Walker work out of there, and they're part of the leadership team with Viking Ninja. And really, the truth is. When I was learning, you know, you do a certification and then it's like you go home. And I would spend hours in my gym and I was in downtown Chicago. And I didn't even know TJ was really part of like Viking Ninja for, for a minute. It took me a minute to kind of put that together. He was just someone I had found on Instagram. And I was like, uh, hey, I'm practicing a 360 and I'm using a doll rod. What do you think? Can you give me a few tips? And he was so responsive and we literally just, we connected like yeah. immediately and it was like an hour drive and we just picked Mondays and I drive out there. So, so their facility is great. They do all the unconventional stuff, you know, and they work out of there. And, um, when the typically, I believe when the Viking Ninja certifications, at least in the past, a lot of them would be housed out of there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was just curious. And then I saw yeah. you there and that just made my life complete. I was well, like, see, wow. he, DJ's a um, strength and conditioning. Yeah. He's a CSCS. And so we connected because learning the mace and creating programs like programming as a trainer or coach is something he and I both really highly valued. And that was something we really connected on. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and um, and that was just sort of a special bond. So it was really sad to leave, you know, and I still chit chat with them. So it's not like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I, w I was wondering how that move was was for you. Like, did you do you feel like there's more people? Because I mean, Texas is like the the place where I feel May started because of on it. Is there a lot of people into Mace in that area? So it's growing. Um, wow. okay. I haven't met anybody else, but here's, what's really interesting. I was telling, so once I got down here and we were, I mean, talk about a life change. It's like, I had to just sort of regroup and figure out what I was doing. Um, and that's when I decided, you know what? I want to learn more. I, I don't want to, I want to learn some, uh, some different moves. And I looked into Rick, I started communicating more with Rick Brown. I had for the last, I mean, several years, but I was like, I wanted to watch your online stuff. I'd like to come to one of your certifications, learn some of these swings. And I was talking to him one day and while I haven't met a lot of practitioners of the mace, here's what's really interesting. The, the, the neighborhood that I'm in, the communities that we're, that have our new developments where I'm at and we're North of Dallas have a lot of individuals that have moved here from India. Oh. And one day I had my garage open. This was early when I moved in here and I was swinging, you know, doing like three sixties in my garage. And this gentleman's walking down the street with his family. And all of a sudden he's older, older Indian, and he's across the street and he stopped. And it was like this crazy, you could tell he was like, why is this woman <laughs> like, what's, this doesn't, 
this doesn't seem like, you know, you could just see the mind blowing and he didn't come, you know, it was just, it was just this, this crazy moment. And I feel, I know this sounds crazy, Victoria, but I feel like there's something about here because, you know, it's yeah. the gotta, it was clearly like he recognized something in it. And, um, so while I haven't met a lot of other coaches and trainers, I do think I'm in an area where more people might recognize, you know, yeah. recognize the tool. It might, it was just, it was actually a very endearing moment. It, I, I was going to say, it seems like maybe it touched him. Maybe it like brought him yeah. back to where he was from or, you it know. It was like we both kind of connected, not, you know, we were new in the neighborhood and like I said, I'm, 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 because I don't, I, I love, I talked to, I've talked to Stephanie um, Sorensen, you know, I, I'm like, all right, I'm ready to learn more. I want to learn about the God. I want to learn about competition swinging, all of that stuff. Oh yeah. And, um, some of the culture, some of the, the background about really where, even before, you know, Jake and Rick were here in the States with it, but you know, the origin of it. Yeah. And I do feel like I'm in a place where I might run into a few people who have a background <laughs> and another, you know point in time using it or seeing it you know yeah so, I mean I think the god I forgot his name I feel terrible there's a there's a there's a couple on Instagram that have actually visited India yeah. but I wish they would just take all of that knowledge and like put it in a book <laughs> yeah yeah that would be great right just to know yeah. more about it yeah yeah well yeah so it's so it's very interesting so you like I said a lot of trainers, no, I haven't really met any, but I haven't really met a lot of other fitness professionals other than through the row house. More than that, I just have a lot of individuals who see it and are like, wow, that's kind of cool. And my son's um, really developed into a very strong baseball player and Aww. my husband plays golf. And so, you know, they just are like, well, yeah, this, this is second I have, nature. I have to ask about that because I know you have uh, like a couple of Instagram pages about yeah, you still maze for baseball and gold. Oh, yeah. so let's oh, yeah. talk a little bit about that. Cause that's interesting. Yeah. You can thank my eight year old for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we were sitting around one night, we were talking about the maze. Cause as he gets older, he like when he and the other, his buddies come over, they play around in that room. It's like things to climb on. It's super fun. I'm like, nobody break anything. That's all I ask like, yeah. <laughs> on them, not my maces. I'm like, don't drop it on your foot, whatever. Um, and so we were, you know, we're talking to Leo and, and, again, going back to lifestyle, wellness, and health, you're thinking, what kind of habits are you developing? I don't want to be neurotic. Like, I think that we've done some disservice with, with our society, with getting people, you know, hyper in tune to everything they're eating, everything. Like, there's a little bit of ebb and flow to this, and you can't yeah. be, you know, completely consumed by it. And so I said to him, when the time's right, you know, we'll start introducing this to you. They think this would be very good. In my opinion, it's great for any sport, but particularly sports that involve rotation. Right. And so um, my husband, Joe, started, you know, I wrote him some golf-specific stuff, and he really found, he had an injury in his back, a history of it. So that has gone away. Wow. Um, and, and he does um, Maverick Fieldhouse's kettlebell program. I had introduced him ah. today. And so between that and the maze, he's like, he's in really good shape. And um, so my son, Leo, was like, you know, mom, you should have more, you know, because they know more about social media now than like we did at eight. <laughs> it wasn't even around. And so he's like, so I, I got those Instagram pages and I just, I got the names and I held them there. And I'm like, everything that's happened in my life is totally divine driven. And I'm like, when the time is right, this will all make sense. And I'll just slowly build the content on those, you know? Yeah. And I'm kind of excited because at least the steel mace baseball, I want that to grow with Leo, you yeah. know, because it's, it's still a fringe, it's still a fringe thing. It's not mainstream, yeah. but he's eight. And I'm thinking to myself, God, in, you know, eight years, 10 years, Will it be a more normal, you know, tool used in some of these sports? I hope so. It's pretty cool. It'd be so cool to see you just develop that because I mean, I've seen, obviously I've seen Eric. I think Eric's probably the number one guy who's going more into the sports side. You know, mm -hmm. he's helped football teams and I don't know, MMA fighters and stuff like that. So it'd be mm -hmm. really cool to see you kind of develop stuff for baseball and golf for, you know, with yeah. that's really yeah. interesting. 
Well, it, where we moved to, so the PGA headquarters are moving here, like a mile wow. from our Yeah, so some of that was, Leo's like, mommy, open these Instagram accounts. I'm like, okay, you don't really have that much time to be doing all this right now, but we'll open them, you know, we'll put them there and we'll work on it. And, and yeah, so, and I said to him, I'm like, well, PGA is coming over here. We're going to have some professional golfers at some point who, who may, you know, may find it interesting. You never know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, other than that, I mean, do you think there's anything else to talk about? <laughs> I mean, I think I can go on talking to you forever, but I mean, yeah. I mean, okay. So is there any tips maybe that you can give to someone who's just getting into still mace and maybe so, they're getting into three sixties or 10 to two? Yes. Yes. So what I would say is, um, I think one of the best benefits is if you have any kind of self doubt, you can work through that using the mace. And I don't, I don't even know exactly, Victoria, I'm not sure exactly what it is about it that brings it out. There's something about that connection, particularly in that move, that you just, whatever powers inside you, you will find, right? You will find a way to generate it, house it, and use it. And it can like just next level your confidence in who you are as a person. Yeah. I think that <clears throat> women don't be afraid. Like, you know. Yes. It's not going to make you big and bulky. People who, like I, you know, some people be like, well, I really put on muscle. Well, I lift to do that on purpose. And that's not just from the steel mace. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right there, please, ladies. Yeah. Because it's like you, you have to be incredibly diligent with a very specific program to build muscle. 360s with the 10, 15, 20 aren't going to do it. You know what I mean? So I tell them, don't be afraid of it. And, um, and also just take your time with it, right? Like it's really easy to get excited with the cool stuff we see, but just remember that all those people you see that are like so very deeply skilled, they worked really hard hour on hour, rep on rep to get there. And, and I, I just say, be conservative and slow and structured in your, in your programming there. Right on. Now, can we, can we maybe see you competing in the future? You think? Okay. So maybe. Yeah. Somebody's been in my ear and I said probably. And then the other day I was like, okay, that's a yes. Yes, I think. I'm, I'm, I think. Yes, I am going to sign up and go to the Texas shootout in July. Yes, we need more women. And you know what? It would be so awesome to see you specifically because you're strong, man. Thanks. I Thank know you. you are. Yeah, I'm a little, you know, and, and, um, I was talking to Mike Betts about it because he, he was the one who was sort of like, he was messaging me. He's like, I don't know. I think blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. And then, you know, I talked to Rick and I was like, okay, maybe I, maybe I should do this. And I said to him, you know, it's one thing to work up to heavy mace, like 25 or 30 and swing that for 10 reps. I'm like, it's another to swing it for five minutes straight, you know? So that's <laughs> why I, started, I just grabbed that 10 and he's like, first I tried the two minutes and then he's like, why don't you try the five? I was like, okay. So then I'm trying the five. I'm like, wow, that's a different ball game. <laughs> it's completely different. My, yeah. my ass got on a, they did like an <laughs> online vintage strength games competition yeah. and it was online. Okay. So I was like, I'm going to try this. I'm going to give it a try. It was something ridiculous like that. And I was like, five minutes, Psh, dude, yeah. when I was done, my arms were just like noodles. I was like, no, I oh, shouldn't no. have done that. I was not prepared for that. I was like, I, I definitely need to train for this. Oh, yes. I'm glad because I was like, I was doing the months backwards. I was like, okay, plenty of time to figure out how to program for this because it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a different challenge. But, you know, whatever, like, I, just go for it. I mean, at this yeah. I, the last few years of my life in particular have been just go for it sort of themed and, and not afraid to, you know, I don't worry about um, embarrassing myself or, I mean, it's something Paris. I never would have thought I was going to do. It's like, do, do your best. I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see. But, yeah. but if I say it out loud, then I know I have to do it. <laughs> so is that a yes? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm all prayer pressuring you. Yeah, yeah. So now it's on a podcast. <laughs> Forever. Forever. I'll make sure to blackmail you with it. <laughs> Perfect. Right on. Okay, so where can people find you online um, if they wanted to work with you? Where so I do everything. I don't have a formal website. Um, I did. It was kind of a landing page. It didn't do anything. It's in, it's in transition. The easiest way is my Instagram at lverta one 
Mm -hmm. uh, super original name. <laughs> um, they can direct message me. I mean, I'm on that messenger all day. My email's on there, which is lauriberto at gmail.com. Those are honestly the two best ways. You want to know what I do? You can look at my Instagram. It's, it's constant. I'm literally either teaching a class, training a client, or training and working on programming. So I live and breathe this stuff. That's Hell for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And honestly, if someone's watching this, listening to this, go check her out. You will see what she's talking about. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thanks, lady. All right. May the universe always flow with you. Thank you. <laughs>